about three hours prior to launch, we uh, walk out of astronaut crew quarters uh, into a uh, silver van, I think the Astro van. One of the folks with us, Charlie Precourt, chief of the office at the time. Astro van pulls out, like Jim said, as we head out to the uh, to the launch pad, a lot of folks along the side of the road's waving, and uh, it's a beautiful vehicle. You get out, and it actually looks like it's alive uh, with the uh, the venting and <clears throat> having the opportunity to go out. So 195 foot level, I consider this. We're only up there because we're standing on the shoulders of all the people that put us there. Into the white room, uh, Michael and myself. I'm putting on my com cap. A lot of folks that help us get suited up, and Paul Lockhart climbing on board. A lot of folks are supporting this effort. It's fantastic. And we're in the vertical, and so you see in the mid-deck, uh, folks getting strapped in. This is uh, Ken Bauer socks getting into uh, the seat on the mid-deck. What a ride. You just kind of have to sit back and uh, experience all of it. Well, you have to open the payload bay doors, and the first thing you have is a view of the Earth up there. And then you've got to get right to work. On the second day, we uh, need to check out <clears throat> both the EMUs, the suits we're going to use, and then Jim also checked out the uh, SRMS, which he was going to use to take the P-1 out of the payload bay. Here's a view from the station of us eight miles away, and you'll see the burn where we, right there, ignite the ohms uh, to commit to target intercept. The final portion of the rendezvous is uh, done manually with computer control. We fly up in front of the space station uh, about 420 feet, and then we uh, fly in, attempting to be as smooth as possible and uh, plume the station as little as possible to try to preserve its lifetime. See the rest of the crew uh, with navigation sensors helping me and, and Paco being the, the policeman with the checklist, making sure we accomplish everything. The system is a, a real testament to the engineers and folks who designed the vehicle. It's amazing to me that you can be flying this fast and uh, be within a half an inch of where you need to be and within a, a hundredth of a foot per second of the desired target at uh, contact. We have sped the video up here. Uh, it really is like watching grass go in a Moscow winter, but we... Uh, <laughs> Pretty exciting day for us, and uh, I hope an exciting day for Peggy. First thing we need to do uh, once we are finished slapping each other on the back is start bringing some of the stuff over. That uh, first bag was what the, contains the seat liners that the new crew will use to put in the Soyuz and then of course the EMUs for the spacewalks. Getting ready the night before the first spacewalk, we had to put some anti-fog in the helmets and uh, configure all the tools. It's a pretty tedious job. It usually takes us uh, w well into the night um, and the next morning it's time to get up early and hit the deck running.
the first day of docked operations, it was my job to lift the uh, P-1 truss out of the payload bay, as Peggy mentioned. I lifted up uh, where she could reach it with the station arm and hand it off to her for the final installation. Ken Barisox assisted me, was a, is a tremendous leader and a great asset to me. I was really, really thankful that he stayed on board our side uh, for uh, this day to help getting the P-1 truss, which you see in our payload bay. Here we are moving the Canadian robotic arm. Uh, Mike L.A. is doing some pre-breathing, trying to purge the nitrogen from his joints in preparation for the spacewalk to go out and activate the P-1 truss. We handed the, the payload off to Peggy, who's uh, moving in, uh, grappling on the station side. Joint operations uh, very <coughs> closely coordinated between the two crews as I held the, the the payload and she moved in to grapple it and then I released it. It's all hers and then she'll move it in for the final position for installation on the space station. I'll move the arm away and use the camera on the, on the end of the arm uh, for a better view. During all these uh, arm ops, the guys in the airlock were also working pretty hard and getting ready. We had to have be at a certain point uh, before they could suit up and uh, so there were a lot of coordination, uh, a lot of coordination between the, the guys in the airlock and us while we were uh, set, uh, attaching the, the P-1 truss. And <coughs> this is a shot of Don uh, and Paco inside. We're doing the uh, prep. This is where uh, the suit, with, including the uh, person side, weighs about 500 pounds, but you can just kind of guide them being guided into the uh, crew lock. And this is Don as he's closing the uh, IV hatch, we call it. And just get ready to start driving the motorized bolt assemblies, the MBAs, which actually bolt one truss to the other. And Don working on the robotic workstation as he's driving those uh, bolts. Once uh, they were securely fastened to each other, we got the go to go outside, and there's really nothing that I could uh, adequately say that would describe what this feels like. You see here the two pieces of truss. This is S0 down here and P1 up here. And the first thing we do is uh, connect the two together electrically while John is um, um, reconfiguring the CETA cart, which you saw in a previous photo. Um, so that we can take the launch locks off. Thanks to the wireless vision system, you can see up close uh, some of the work that we do. It's uh, not very complicated, but it's, um, it's interesting. <laughs> this is, I'm using a manual ratchet, about 50 foot pounds are required to uh, turn the bolt, and I'll turn those for one turn. So look like uh, from inside of the shuttle looking out to P1. And then once I get those removed, I use the uh, pistol grip tool, or PGT, and I let go, and my tether kind of pulls it out of the slot. And here I get a chance to go ahead and stow it. It's, this is like hurting cats also, getting it all stowed back into the bag. It looks a lot easier there than it was in flight, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, EVA2, the next thing we had to do was connect the uh, two pieces of the truss together hydraulically, if you will. These are what we call fluid jumpers, and they carry ammonia, which is a cooling fluid used on the uh, space station. And uh, you'll see John is handing me um, the end of them, and then he will join me on the side of the truss. This is uh, what happens when the sun goes down. This is real time. It doesn't take very long at all. Once we get them connected, we open the bale uh, to open the valve to allow the um, two pieces to be connected together. And this is just sort of an overview of the two jumpers uh, in place. The uh, launch restraints that were in place on P1 had to be removed once they were in flight. And this is Mike taking one of the keel pins off, and he's installing a bolt. And then once uh, he had it in his hands, it was my job to translate the seat cart down the rail, which was a fabulous experience, just by fingertips. You can, uh, it's a huge mass, and just lightly uh, pushing it down the rail. And as Mike controls it, we have to take the, uh, the keel pin, and now Mike will install it inside the truss. And this is, looks like from one of the cameras on the back of the uh, payload bay. Uh, 
Another uh, ability we wanted to leave on the station was the ability to use this wireless vision system when the shuttle wasn't there. This is an antenna that's uh, used to transmit the signal into the station. And uh, we carried the, sh the antenna out of the airlock with us and then it attached it to a stanchion, which you see here. This whole thing is uh, about the size of a person. You'll see John here is on the very end of P1 and he's going to go over the edge and this is what it looks like on the edge of the universe as far as I could tell. It's quite a view. I guarantee he's holding on strong with his right hand. <laughs> as soon as the sun went down again, I grabbed that whole stanchion thing and handed it to John and he's uh, locating it here in the uh, foot place where we're going to attach it using the another, again, the pistol grip tool to attach it. And once it's all in place, we can take the cover off like uh, chicken dinner. Consider this the ride of my life. Uh, the robotic arm is coming into position right below the cedar cart. And it's my job to uh, install a foot restraint onto the arm. And this is Mike removing the, the uh, little, they're called wheel bogies, as I pull the uh, seated cart away from the rail. And then I had the opportunity to ride the robotic arm, courtesy of uh, Don Pettit, uh, all the way around underneath the uh, space station to the fullest. And it started off and it started getting dark. And it was, uh, it was almost the, the blackest black I'd ever seen. And as we came back around the, the uh, starboard side, the sun came up in the most tremendously brilliant white light illuminating the station. And Mike guided us in, and here he's putting the last wheel bogey in place and locked it in. Well, we knew we were going to have to come inside soon, so we took the opportunity to take a couple last pictures. Um, and all good things must come to an end. But we went inside feeling that we hadn't lost anything and uh, later we confirmed everything because we double count for just to make sure. Getting out of the suit is, um, is a relief. It's like uh, you're coming home after a long day's work. You can see uh, John and I look both a little whipped. Transfer was a big, big job. Uh, uh, during this time we had to get the large bags like the 5 MLE bag floating up there plus all the other uh, hardware for EVA support and uh, just for the Expedition 6 crew to have while in orbit. You can see lots of different things going on. Don's doing IFM while everything else is going on. So busy time. And here we're installing one of the payloads, uh, actually exchanging. We, we had a new one brought up on the shuttle and putting it in the, to the station. And then uh, this one's going back home on the shuttle, PS test. Protein crystal goes in. This is a, a tour starting on the flight deck of the shuttle. Uh, heads down onto the mid deck and around. You see all the bags. This is obviously a little speeded up. You do a loop to go through the ha uh, airlock and into the uh, to the laboratory module. And uh, you can see a lot of activities going on. You got to avoid people. That's actually one of the things that took a little longer for me to learn since I didn't have many people around. And uh, you can see that the node was a little cluttered, the airlock there to the side. And then we continue on through the PMA and the, into the FGB. This is all Expedition 6 and 7's food, minus the stuff we ate. <laughs> and heading into uh, the uh, PEHA-O, below us was the docking compartment. And here is the service module, which is the main area we have the galley here and uh, the, the toilet. And then at the end of that uh, is the progress. I hope that my crew, Don, Nikolai, and I will be able to work as well over the next four or seven, however many months we end up living on station. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully more than four. And this concludes our ceremony for today. Thank you all for joining us. Again, a change of command ceremony steeped in naval tradition. Uh, it's a, an honor to be part of ceremonies like this. I mentioned that another tradition is to put the flight patch up on board the vehicle. Uh, we have an awful lot of flights getting ready to go. Luckily, the station's getting bigger, though. And here's Valeri installing our patch. Also in the node, we have a separate area for the expedition crews that have been up there. Number five, looks good. Okay, here it is, uh, the crews, everybody's saying goodbye, leaving Expedition 6. Uh, Don 
and Socks and Nikolai, who are still up there having a good time. They, Socks wrote me a note and said he successfully made jello. Here's <laughs> LA closing the hatch. And here we are on the flight deck uh, just before we undock, and things have to get back uh, to, to work now. In other words, we have to concentrate on what we're doing because we're about to separate the, the shuttle from the space station. And this is a view out the window. That also must have been something naval. I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> I found the undock and the fly around on both flights, STS-111 and 113, to be a pretty emotional time, especially for the station crews, because it's the first time after they've lived there for five or six months to back away and look at the station and see how large it's grown. It's really a beautiful time to look at the station with the earth in the background. Uh, and you might have just missed that. That was the MEPSI deploy right there. That's what John alluded to earlier. That was our little payload that we shot out. And good camera work by John in LA got the pictures. This is kind of what our daily routine was like every day. We woke up, couldn't believe it was time to get up already. Had a little stretch and then uh, hit the head. Normal stuff, brush your teeth, wash your hair. For some people, washing their hair is a little bit more entertaining than others. Well, that's because the pilot always has to work hard, and so I didn't have much time to get ready. <laughs> and I'm good. We had the uh, exercise device there. It was a cycle ergometer, um, a little bit different from the one on the station, but uh, same idea. And here is some more of the uh, just housekeeping that we have to do for the shuttle on each flight. These are LIO cartridges that have to be changed out. And it takes quite a few people to do it. A little physics experiment. If you get the angle of the pliers just right, you can watch the uh, nonlinear motion where it trades energy from the different spin motions. I found a bag of pistachios in the food locker. And I was surprised my wife had given us a bag of pistachios, and Peg was really good at the zero-G experiments with pistachios. <laughs> That's the way to eat right there. We also had to do a few fluid experiments just to make sure we had completed all our scientific investigations. <laughs> and I thought it worked well with orange juice because you can see it better. And the commander's nightmare, <laughs> <laughs> but a great crew. In an effort to show you what happens inside the fluid, you can see the uh, necklace and also some other uh, bubbles of air inside the droplet of water. Finally, at the end of a long day, it kind of ends the same way it starts going to bed. This is how we sleep. These sleeping bags are attached in various ways. Some people like Peggy like to be kind of bungeed in. There are people like Paco just strapped a bag to the ceiling and hang there. And on reentry day, um, well, one of the three reentry days we had, uh, put my suit on two legs at a time. Uh, here's Paco. There's only three of us on the flight deck. I'm the uh, the lower portion of the screen here, MS2, and uh, down on the mid deck. Expedition five in the mid deck. We tried to give them a smooth ride home, but it's not possible. It's a really rough train ride coming down. These calls are all Paul helping me. Hey, you lined up. 3,000 speed brakes commanded about 10%. Okay. 2,000 should be the pre player. On your top with the light. More than good. 1,000 feet, 306 max. 800 or more. Daily of 500. No change to speed brakes. 400, 300. Hold it off. 